Good afternoon, boys and girls. Um, this is the third little um, devotional about the most important week in the world. The week leading up to Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. Today I want to ask you a question before we start. I want you to think about I want you to put, you, put yourself in the place of Jesus, okay? I want you to think about you and your closest friends, okay? Do you have some people in mind? You spent all of your life, um, all of your grown-up life, if it was you were a grown-up, but let's, let's just say you spent the last three years uh, being with these friends, so they've become really, really close friends. You um, go out to eat together. You uh, maybe go to school together, um, go to church together. Uh, maybe you go to playgrounds or parks together. And so they're very close friends of yours. Now, all of a sudden, one of those friends says a very mean, ugly thing about you. And they spread a rumor about you. Or they just say to you, I'm not going to be your friend anymore because I think blah, 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 whatever it might be. They've turned their back on you, right? They're not your friend anymore. They have betrayed you. How would that make you feel? What would be the feelings going through your mind? Would your stomach be a little bit upset? Um, would you be sad? Would you be mad? Um, hopefully you wouldn't want to get revenge and do something mean back. But I think most, most all of all of any feelings you would be sad and disappointed because you thought they were your friend now we're not talking about just like a, if a friend moves and goes to a different school or if a friend moves to another town they can still be your friends right but this is a friend who doesn't want to be your friend anymore and is so uh, determined so blatant about it that they do something to really hurt you to harm you okay that is what happened to Jesus in the last week this most important week remember yesterday we talked about the Passover and about Jesus being a servant and washing the disciples feet um, his 12 closest friends were with him at that Passover, the last Passover that he um, ate and drank with them. And he washed all of their feet, knowing, because he knew he's God, he's all man, but he's also God, that one of those friends was going to betray him, was going to turn against him and hurt him. And that's what our uh, little folder activity is about today. Okay, here's a picture. You can see Judas there, because Judas is the one. And if you remember the story, if you've read in your Bible um, the story, this week. You can stop this video and read it right now if you want to before you do the game. Um, you'll find out um, how Judas goes about doing this. Okay? In fact, let's, let's go ahead and read that um, in our Bible story book so that you know what's going on. Okay? We'll read out of our um, Beginner's Bible Storybook. 
about Judas. Remember that Judas was um, one of the 12 apostles that Jesus chose. And I'm going to see if it's in here because it might not even be in here. Um, because they don't, okay, yes, here it is. Okay, so let's, let's say the names of the apostles before we go on. Let's see if you can name them with me, okay? There are 12, ready? Peter, Andrew, James, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Thomas, Matthew, another James, he was the son of Alphaeus, another um, Simon, or he could be called Thaddeus. Okay, now I lost my place. Peter, Andrew, James, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Thomas, Matthew, James, Simon, Thaddeus, and Judas Iscariot. Okay, Simon, there was, actually there were two Simons, if you call Simon Peter, and then there was another Simon, and then there were two James. James, the brother of John, James, the son of Alphaeus. Okay, that, that was a very common name back then. Okay. So here we have the story. Jesus is arrested and there's Judas. Let's see what he's doing. Judas went to the leaders. He asked, how much will you pay me if I help you capture Jesus? Judas was really a thief. And you can read that in your Bible, in the scriptures that I gave you on the first day. They said, 30 pieces of silver. Hmm. So Judas took the money and made a plan. Jesus had gone to his favorite garden to pray. So remember, Judas would know where this is because he had been close with Jesus. The disciples went along. Jesus prayed, Father, if it is your will, I am ready to give my life for the sins of the people. But if there is another way, Please let it be, but I will do your will. Soon, Judas arrives. He's got a band of soldiers with him and some of the leaders of the Jewish people. Peter wanted to protect Jesus, but Jesus said, No, I must allow this to happen. So all the disciples ran away, and the soldiers arrested Jesus. Now, in that little story, it doesn't tell you how Judas betrayed Jesus, but if you look it up in your Bible scripture, it will tell you that that's what he did. He went up to him. Isn't that kind of sad that he's, he used a term of affection to betray Jesus? Okay, let's do the folder game. Here's what it looks like. Okay. And I'm going to read you the question. And then we'll put the answer on there. Okay. There's number one. Who betrayed Jesus? Who betrayed Jesus? Ju Judas, right? Judas. Okay, we're going to go to this one down here. What did the multitude carry? What what did the people that came to arrest Jesus, what were they carrying? What were they carrying? Were they carrying balloons and um, party stuff? Or were they carrying torches and weapons, swords, clubs? Yes, this says lanterns, torches, weapons. Even though Jesus had been with them all the time for three years and never fought, um, they came out like they were going to be arresting somebody who was going to, you know, try to resist and fight back. How many pieces of silver... How many pieces of silver 
did Judas betray Jesus for? Thirty, right? Thirty pieces of silver. Isn't that interesting that the story of Joseph that we did back in the fall, his brothers sold him for twenty pieces of silver. Okay, what sign did Judas give to the crowd? What did he do for them to know which person they were supposed to take? Because remember, it was dark, um, dusky or dark, completely dark, and uh, they wouldn't have been able to see very well. So he goes up and he, what? Kisses Jesus. Gives him a kiss. What did he say to Jesus before he kissed him? If you look up in your scripture, he says, like, hello, rabbi, hello, master. This one says, he says, um, hail, master. Okay? Hail is just another term for um, hello. There it is. Okay. Oh, did it fall off? Whoops. Oh, no, that was another one that fell off. Okay. All right. Where was Jesus when he was betrayed? Where did this happen? Where did it happen? In the temple? Or in the garden? Remember? In the garden, right? In the garden of Gethsemane. Okay. Who did the multitude seek? Who was it they came for? Did they come for Peter? Did they come for Matthew? Nope. They came for Jesus of Nazareth. Correct? Jesus of Nazareth. Okay. What did Jesus ask them? He asked them a question when they came. Did he say... What are you doing? Um, who do you who are you looking for? Or do you believe in me? What what did he ask them? Who who are you looking for? This is old uh, King James Bible on this. It says, Whom whom seek ye? That's um, not common uh, language that you hear nowadays. So in, in putting this in um, child language would be, who are you looking for? Okay. Where did Judas throw the silver? Okay, if you read on, this is after he sees that Jesus is going to be crucified. He, he's sorry that he did this. He goes back to the rulers and he tries to give them the money back because he, he doesn't want to be a part of this. He, he knows Jesus is innocent. And the rulers say, we don't care, you know. We're get, they were getting what they wanted, and so they didn't care about the money. And so Judas just threw the money down. He went to the temple. That's where he was at, where the rulers were. And he threw the money down. And then, what kind of blood did Judas betray? Was Jesus guilty or innocent? Right, we all know that he was innocent, right? The only person who never sinned. That's why he could be our perfect lamb, our perfect Passover lamb. What happened to Judas? This is rather sad. Because Judas could have repented and come back. And Jesus, um, when he raises from the dead, he would have forgiven him. Um, he could have been a part, again, of the, of the chosen group, Jesus' closest friends, but he didn't do that. He was so distraught, so upset with what he did, that he went out and he hanged himself. He killed himself. And uh, 
The last question, we didn't go over this at all, but some of the people that were with the multitude were some of the chief priests and the elders, the oldest Jews, supposedly the most wise. And that's who, who came with Judas to take Jesus. So that is the betrayal, Judas' betrayal of Jesus. And tomorrow we will be doing um, an activity about the crucifixion, I believe. So um, have a great day. Get out and enjoy this beautiful sunshine. Okay? That's in order. Okay, love you. Bye.